we can confirm without a doubt is our equipment is on the surface of the moon. Odysseus, nicknamed Odie, a lunar lander built by Houston-based Intuitive Machine. New images from NASA's historic mission to the moon. These are the first pictures we've seen of the lunar lander there on the moon, the first U.S. spacecraft to make that soft landing on the surface in more than 50 years. This morning, the U.S. celebrating that historic landing where no human has been before, the south pole of the moon. Houston, Odysseus has found his new home. Welcome to the moon. It's a testament to the island, whether it's, it's government or private industry, everyone who's worked to build up our space industry on the Isle of Man over the last 25 years, but still internationally one of the world's leading centers for space business. And that's what's allowing us to do this. An unmanned lunar lander, nicknamed Odysseus, successfully landed on the surface of the moon last month after travelling 238,850 miles through space. And this mission put man with two ends back on the moon, as there was Manx tech on board. But this isn't actually that unusual for space missions these days, as the Isle of Man is a big player in the space industry, and has been for more than two decades. Still, I wanted to know more, so last week... I sent my own voice up into space to bounce it off a satellite and send it back down again to connect with one of the proudest Manxies I know living in Florida and immersed in the space industry. My name is Chris Stott. I am the founder, CEO and the chair of AS NOAA Limited on the Art of Man, which means New Moon and Manx and also Lone Star Data Holdings uh, based here in Florida in the United States. Which is where we're speaking to you now, Chris. It's very exciting to speak with you, especially considering uh, you have achieved something of a milestone, which is beyond most of our wildest dreams. Can you just tell us uh, what you've been doing recently, Chris Stott? Well, well, thank you, Christy. Um, oh, yeah, February, um, February the 22nd, we landed successfully on the surface of the moon. We were our company with AS Noah and Lone Star. We were customers, one of the six commercial customers on board Intuitive Machines, Odysseus Lander, the first ever private company to land on the moon and the first ever soft landing first time, and down at Malapert Crater in the South Lunar Pole. And everyone, you know, know that you can look up at the moon tonight, and then you can see where the latest Manx company is down at the South Pole. You'll see the crescent of the moon uh, capping that today. And then, of course, in the past, the Isle of Man has had such an incredible history with the Apollo program and now with the Artemis program. And what we're working on is disaster recovery and leveraging the benefits of the Isle of Man to do so. Now, when we say disaster recovery, this is to do with data storage, isn't it? So just explain a little bit about, about what that means. Think, think of us and our eventual goal is global backup, global refresh and global restore for all the data we create as a civilization and using the unique benefits of the Isle of Man to do so in space. So all we're doing is backing up a digital twin of the planet I think all we're doing. And um, that's this was our first mission. That was our first test mission. It was uh, called the Independence Mission. It carried a Manx flag on board, digi digitally in our payload. And we transmitted in cis lunar space, which is on the way to the moon and back. No one's ever done that with documentation. And we did the same thing from the surface of the moon too. Even though the lander, when it landed, came down at a tilt, we, thanks to the great partners at Intuitive Machines, our lunar access providers, we were still able to receive and transmit to and from the lander and to conduct our experiments. So so what does this mean then for, for the average person? What, what does this actually mean for the future? No, well, think of it this way. Here we are on Earth where data drives almost everything we do. It's a software-defined future, a data-defined future. Every day, the human race creates 2.5 quintillion bytes of new data. That's an exabyte every 24 hours, a thousand petabytes every 24 hours. A different way of thinking of this is that's one million MacBook Pros every 24 hours. And that clock hits one second past midnight, open another million boxes. And this data rate, just like our chips and just like our technology is accelerating, is doubling every two years. So where do we keep all that data? Uh, we had a data loss so bad in human history 2,000 years ago, we still talk about it and teach it in our schools today. 
and that was the loss of the Library of Alexandria, which was actually burnt down by Julius Caesar's troops in the Roman Civil War. Now, flash forward to today, we have conflict, we have climate change, we have nation states attacking data in other companies through cyber warfare and human error. And the idea is that we take all of the data that is secure, that needs to be looked after, and then we transmit that back up to the moon. And by the way, the moon is so ideal for data storage for the planet Earth. If it wasn't there, we'd have to build it. Everything we're doing is solar powered. We have natural cooling. We have constant line of sight communications with the Earth. So everything we're doing is building on 60 years of the space industry, 60 years of what's happening in Silicon Valley, and the last quarter century of what we have all worked to do and build on the Isle of Man. Uh, that is the much abused quote from Armageddon. This is why we have a space program. Wow. Because we can now avert disaster for the entire human race. That's the goal. That's an incredible statement, avert disaster for the entire human race. That that's I mean, what a thing to be involved with. How does it make you feel being part of something this massive, this epic? Oh, one side honoured and the other side it's so much fun. We have an incredible team of people around us. The former head of Google's data centres, the former head of Morgan Stanley Satellite Finance Branch in New York. I mean, all of these people, incredible engineers from Draper and Honeywell, Boeing and Lockheed, and amazing customers too. And so that's what we're doing. This is all demand driven. This isn't us developing a technology and looking to find a user for it. This is people coming to us saying, help, we're in pain, we need a solution. And it's a testament to the island and to what the island has done and everyone who's worked, whether it's, it's government or private industry, everyone who's worked to build up our space industry on the Isle of Man over the last 25 years, because it is now still quiet in the press but still internationally one of the world's leading centers for space business. And that's what's allowing us to do this. The incredible legislation on the art of man, incredible government support and vision coming from the DFE and others to do this. It, it's, it's truly, truly a good thing. You know, every time a SpaceX lo a rocket launches, there's parts of it made on the island. All those new probes that are going up, they're part of the Starship that launched yesterday, part was built on the island. And that's the thing is that space has become normal and routine as it should. And it's just a normal part of our economy now, whether it be financing, accounting, legal services, refinancing, insurance and manufacturing and people leveraging the great advantages of the art of man proven now for a quarter of a century. You know, the art of man is still taught as the business case in business schools who teach space business around the world. Like we are the jurisdiction. But, you know, it's not that novel because it's just part of everyday life now. I always love chatting to you about things like this, Chris, because you are so passionate, not just about the work that you do, but about these Manx connections. And the fact that the company has a Manx name, New Moon, as well, is just fabulous. It's clearly remained a very important part, piece of the puzzle for you. Oh, always. I mean, this is it. You only have one life. You might as well live it. And you might as well do something that you're passionate about. And as I was always taught at Hong Kong Primary School, if you follow your passions in life, you'll never work a day in your life. What do you think when you think of, of Chris back in, in school there, back here on the Isle of Man? Could you ever have imagined doing something like this? Oh, I was I was dream I, I I was only dreaming about it at that point. Always love space. But yes, no, I mean if you know and I think that's one of the things you learn, isn't it? The only limitations you have in life are the ones you choose to place upon yourself. And growing up on the Isle of Man is an incredible benefit. Look, the rest of the world is wonderful, but it's not the island. And the opportunities available to young people growing up on the Isle of Man, whether it be in theatre, arts, business, hands-on learning, technical apprenticeships, anything you want to do in life, the Isle of Man gives you an incredible education to do that. It's a safe haven in a world gone mad to grow up. And look at that. I mean, it's not just me. There's so many of us on the Isle of Man involved in the space industry. We even have astronauts living on the Isle of Man. They choose to, right? I mean, it's an incredible place. And we've got our latest batch of uh, over at Mansat now we now renamed River Advisors. Think of Douglas, the Dew in the Glass. And uh, we've now got this is now our twenty fifth year of students heading out to space school in, in Houston, mm -hmm. and just demonstrating again, just you know, do the one thing that's within your power to do, and that's get in the game, enter a competition, go take that degree, volunteer go sign up for, for a company and go, get to work and then build your own company and go do amazing things. There's nothing stopping you.
You take the Isle of Man with you, Chris, and you also continue to inspire us here. I mean, I'm talking to you from the Isle of Man and you've just made me love it even more, which is just... <laughs> oh, and I miss the Isle of Man terribly. Of course I do. Oh, my gosh, it's, it's in my every waking thought. But then think about that. The Isle of Man is on the moon. We made part, Peel Electric made parts for every single Apollo mission for the lunar excursion modules, which is still on the moon. The Manx are always a part of history, whether it's helping Francis Drake circumnavigate the world or whether it's, you know, building things that go to the moon. It's just it's just in our nature. And I'm going to ask you a very sort of layperson question here, because most of what you do, Chris, I, I, it completely just blows my mind and it is way outside of my ken, as they say. So I, I just want to ask you, how how does this data storage work then? How how do you get data stored on the moon? No, absolutely. So, yeah. So um, with this particular mission, our first mission, Independence, we actually carried data on board the lunar lander, uh, Odysseus, the Intuitive Machines Nova Sea lander. We carried that on board for the state of Florida. They were our first big customer. And, you know, why would Florida want to do disaster recovery? Well, we have hurricanes. We have all sorts of other things. It's a growing state here. And the idea is that, yes, any data that you keep here on the planet, of course you should back it up down here. Of course. But also let's take a step back and say, okay, where else can we back this up from? And do it under data sovereignty laws and do it in a way that's environmentally friendly. So they were the offer. So we loaded the data for them. And then we also had some other files on board. So when we went up, when we were trans, so lander launched on a Falcon 9 uh, from SpaceX, again, Max parts inside. Awesome, right? And there we are on the beach at Cocoa Beach, it launched on the 15th of January, which was Ernest Shackleton's birthday, the great polar explorer. And of course, it was going to go land at the South Pole of the Moon. It was very cool. We thought that was very That's you know, so perfect. It was a fast burn to the moon. Uh, so we did our testing uh, almost at the moon in lunar orbit, the first set of testing uh, February the 19th. And this time we transmitted a document from Earth, like think refresh and restore, like having an external hard drive on your PC. And we transmitted a document to the lunar lander in flight. And that document that we transmitted was actually a copy of, a, tra- a digital copy, the first ever one sent off planet for digital storage for disaster recovery ever. And that was a copy of the American Declaration of Independence. And the document, we then you know, ran the virtual data center on board and we picked another document on board already preloaded to bring back, refresh and restore. Like if you had a disaster, I want to send my data off planet. I want to be able to get it back. Uh, we actually brought back a copy of the US Constitution and Bill of Rights. And we thought that was an important thing to do, given the way that the world seems to be slipping into darkness again. It's always up to everyone. Manx, democracy, very much at the forefront, right? Shine a light in the darkness. The same way Manx men and women helped America become a country and become a democratic republic, based a lot on the principles of the Manx government, by the way. I hope all the Manx history students know that and are singing those, singing those same songs. This time around, we did that. Shine a light in the darkness. Let people remind people what it is to have these freedoms that have been so hard fought and hard won. And so we then did the same thing from the surface of the moon. So we tested in cis lunar space on the way to the moon and then from the very surface of the moon itself, sending documents, receiving documents back. And we had no data loss. It was a fantastic experiment. And then the experiment was amazing because that lander came in and, you know, it, this is, again, the first time a private company has ever done this. First ever successful landing on the first attempt. And it was a soft landing. Came in pretty fast, but it, they made it. Like when the president of the United States calls it a success, we'll take that. <laughs> and Intuitive Machines, also has links to the island too, by the way, did something that no superpower has ever done in human history. The United States, the Soviet Union, the People's Republic of China, India, none of these people have ever done that before. All of them failed on their first attempt. A private company led by entrepreneurs with ties to the Isle of Man. And there we are on board as another private company to test out this incredible disaster recovery backup for the entire human race. And these are just the first small steps and giant leaps. I always love the fact that Neil, Star- Neil Armstrong, on the record, favorite pro is the White Stone down in Balasala, right? I mean, that kind of stuff. The, the stuff that happens on the Isle of Man is just, the history ties here are there. But that's what we were doing at the South Pole of the Moon, too, on Shackleton's birthday. You're listening to me, Christy D, in conversation with proud Manxman Chris Stott, who has followed his dreams to the actual moon and back taking his beloved island with him in various ways as he journeys through space. 
Do you know, my mind is blown by what you achieve. It really is, and and the way you talk about it, you are certainly the right pair of hands to be to be leading this. Um, what, so, what would be next on the back of this? Now that you've achieved this, what what could that mean for the future? You mentioned small small steps to giant leaps. What would be the next giant leap? Yeah, I'm not, thank you. Absolutely, we've got a second test flight going up this year. Our Freedom mission. Uh, we've then got uh, today. Actually, we're putting out what's called a request request for proposal, an RFP. Say that three times quickly. Uh, we're doing that today, and that's going out for the first of a series of missions to orbit the moon in 2026. Massive purpose-built lunar data storage satellites. Um, someone once called us men in black meet Swiss bankers. That's and fantastic. <laughs> It is really cool, isn't it? And we love it because that's what we're going to, that's what we are. We're just storing all of humanity's data in a living, breathing digital twin. So heaven forbid something happens down here. And it seems to happen pretty much all the time these days. I think even as we're speaking, there's a couple of major burger chains around the world who are out of business mm-hmm. today because they've been hacked and all sorts of stuff like this. It's, it's a constant thing. And the idea is as tool, as what? As evolved tool using aids. Very much in terms of catechism, there. I'm a Catholic, so just, just to let you know that that works. As evolved tool using apes, we've got this God given moon. It is Earth's largest satellite and it is perfect for data storage. And we're just leveraging that. And we're doing it well. We're VC funded, right? Venture capitalists are funding us and they see the vision of this too. And, and we're working hard. Now we have customers and we're, you know, we're in revenue already and all those good, good, good things for a company to be in. And so that's our next big steps, these big lunar orbiting satellites, uh, which are all 100% solar powered. Fantastic on the carbon credit side of things too, but also doing the right thing. After that, our goal is to get down, back down onto the surface of the moon, down into lava tubes on the moon for sort of exabyte and yottabyte level facilities. And we're very, and yesterday's success of SpaceX's Starship flight is very much a part of that too. I mean, this is it. That was a dreadnought moment yesterday for spaceflight when that's when the Starship went up. There was another dreadnought moment when we landed on the moon. And this is it. We're in the third decade of the 21st century, Christy, and things are changing in so much. This is the middle of this digital renaissance, like the first renaissance with printing presses. Things changed politically, environmentally, economically, and everything changed. It's happening again right now. And what's happening with access to space and what we're using space for to the benefit of everyone on the planet. That's the only way to use space, to benefit everyone down here. 100% of the money spent in space isn't. It's spent in our economies. And the art of man does very nicely out of the space economy, as it should, in our own unique way. You did mention, of course, things do change and, and things change in the industry you're talking about unbelievably quickly and with relation to data as well, doesn't it? With technology changes so, so, so fast. I mean, is there a chance that that what you're doing is going to be superseded and we'd need to then sort of change what you're doing and, and sort of advance the technology they're using in order to keep this data safe for the future for decades to come? Oh, absolutely. No, we're constantly looking at that too, always. That's why, so that's why we're not, we're not an archive. We're a living, breathing twin. Mm-hmm. And so when we improve technology here, when we improve storage technology, software technologies, l- large language models, by the way, everyone, please don't freak out about AI. It's not artificial intelligence. Not. These are large language models. These are fast computers running, in essence, uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. I know I'm really dumbing it down there, but it's an algorithms. Yeah. Real AI is on the horizon, but it's nothing. It's going to be so much better than what we're doing right now. But that's all data. It's software. It's data. It's the software that runs our power stations. It's the software that runs our hospitals, that runs our banks. It's the software when we're doing our homework at school, right? It's the data we create and how we create it. That's what we're backing up. And that will constantly change, but that's the most wonderful thing. The moon's only four days away. We've been flying helicopters on Mars, which, by the way, use technology developed by Isle of Man companies. Yeah, Ubuntu uh, by Canonical, an incredible company based on the Isle of Man and around the world. Open source Linux, Ubuntu, the largest operating system on the planet, bigger than Microsoft. And that's thanks to an incredible gentleman, Mark Shuttleworth, who came back from his space flight uh, uh, back in the early 2000s and built out that incredible asset for the human race. And it's open source. It's a whole different future, Christy, and it's yeah. happening. And it's happening because of the island. And that's one thing I want the young people on the island to know, that 
you're part of something incredible just by growing up on the island. I know sometimes it might be frustrating and boring and you may go, oh dear. No, that's, trust me, in hindsight, that's one of the most amazing things about the Isle of Man. It's an incredibly safe place to grow. And you've got amazing people around you and use and leverage those resources. Take advantage of things that people in London and New York and Sydney and Tokyo could only ever dream of. Mm -hmm. And you have them right there at home, surrounded by amazing people to help you too. Well, I mean, chatting with you always amazes me, I have to say. And, and I could have another hour's worth conversation with you about AI and technology in general. But I know you are an exceptionally busy man with uh, with many, many important things to do. You, you're prepping for, for the next steps here, of course, as we were just hearing. Um, I suppose my, my last question would be, I, I guess, with regards to utilising the moon in such a way. Obviously, it's sort of it's going to be opening up more and more to more and more people to make use of the, of the moon in, in various different ways. Do you, you must feel a certain responsibility. Um, in ensuring that, you know, sort of, first of all, we don't take this for granted, but also that, that we don't do anything that could be in any way sort of damaging to the to, to our universe as such. And, you know, sort of, we, we need to be very careful with that respect as well, don't we? Well, you know, you know you're quite right. And, you know, when we're looking at what's happening with uh, the Chinese and Russians have their own lunar effort underway. Not always the nicest people to the environment, but we have laws and regulations that we will follow down here. And the Artemis program and the Artemis Accords, which the Artemis government signed, thank you, Office of External Relations and the Chief Minister's Office for getting that. We, we actually signed before Britain did, I'm just saying. The Artemis Accords are an internationally non-binding agreement established by the United States that reaffirm the freedoms outlined in the Outer Space Treaty about private ownership, private investment, and private growth to help government programs up on the moon. And they stand in stark contrast to things that China and Russia want to do out there, which are slightly less friendly and so brilliant it has allowed so many more companies to come and invest in the island to do work for the future of all of us but i must admit though christy sometimes if it's if it's a choice between tearing up the amazon rainforest to get to platinum and tearing up a crater on the moon to get to the platinum mm -hmm. i'd rather tear up the crater on the moon mm -hmm. but that's just, that's just me well listen if anyone wants to find out more about this incredible work that you do where can they go oh thank you asnoah.com or lonestarluna.com or if you want to have real fun, just Google Lunar Data Centers. Just be, there's, there's over 150 missions by the Western Free Alliance from India to Japan to South Korea to North America to Western Europe and ourselves. There's 150 missions already on the books to go to the moon, not including what the tyrannies are sending up, China, Russia, and the others, that little club of uh, despotic nightmares. So, <laughs> right? So that's why we're going back to the moon this time. This is not about flags and footprints. This is about making the earth a better place. This is about leveraging those resources, leveraging energy and expanding out and doing something that's good for all of us. And do you envisage a future where uh, human civilization might live off planet, off earth? Oh, always. Absolutely. Well, don't forget, we've been living on the space station now for over 20 years. Non -stop. True, yeah. Even, even, my, my, even my, you know, my, the best friend of my life who I married and my, my lovely wife, Nicole, she lived up there for a while. For our entire son's lifetime, it's been normal for people to live off planet. Incredible to think it really is. And even I think now, when I think back to in a, in a different life of mine, working with uh, the musicians Davy Knowles and Battle Simon, and I remember Davy being with you. I think it, it, it was in uh, was in Texas, and he, he made a phone call to the space station for Davy to play one of his songs to the space station. Yeah. I thought it would require huge amounts of technology, and even that was, oh, no, we just use an iPhone. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, you know, there you are. Manxman pay, played the first ever live music to the space station. Okay, Nick, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Very cool. I've got, I've got Davey and the guys here. Hello there. Hello. Hello. Absolutely, it's. Uh, I think it's like every kid's dream. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. I'm. Uh, I think I'm over Africa right now, but uh, um, had a great spacewalk and looking forward to some fun robotics apps tomorrow. I love this place. My breath and my bones. I'm always cold. This island, my home. And uh, want to let you guys know how much I enjoy your music. Chris introduced me to it, and. Um, Thank you so much. It's such an honor. I never thought that, you know, songs that we're playing and songs that I've written would uh, end up in space somewhere. So that's, <laughs> that's such a big honor. Thank you so much. May I return to this island?
Oh, Davy Knowles. Extraordinary, isn't it? Thank you so much for being so inspiring, continuing to do what you do. Um, and do please keep us posted on your work. We will happily shout about it. Oh, well, thank you, Christine. Thank you, everyone. And also a huge thanks to everyone at Cura for our spectrum work. Oh, my gosh, it wouldn't be possible otherwise. And to DFE doing amazing things. And thank you. Standing up, outer space. <laughs>